Influencers, watch out, because Michaela is coming for you. God damn it. What launched as a weird project way back in 2016 from a company called Brud has just taken a huge step into the world of legitimacy alongside other top talent who have gained traction through social media apps like Instagram and TikTok, uh, alongside massive, huge talent like musicians, actors, comedians, and more. Uh, this woman has officially signed with a talent agency, and not just any talent agency, Michaela is just signed with CAA, which re represents people like Stephen Colbert, Peyton Manning, Beyonce, J.J. Abrams, and even Dr. Disrespect. The Creative Artists Agency. I've mm -hmm. been to their office. It's like, uh, you know, a supervillain's lair. Yeah. It's one of the nicest buildings in L.A. Mm -hmm. So this is a big deal. Yes, it is. However, there is one issue here. And that would be that Michaela is not real. No. She is a completely fabricated, computer-generated, ethnically ambiguous, brand-safe, non-breathing, drama-free influencer that was initially launched on Instagram and has since expanded her reach by joining TikTok. We've definitely spoken about her in a video way back when she started picking up steam online, but the results four years after her debut are impressive. But not really all that shocking because of the novelty of all of it. Yeah. Also... I mean, it's not like this. Look at Japan. Yeah, they have the, the pop star. You look to the east, and yeah. eventually it makes its way west. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Michaela, or Lil Michaela, as her account state, uh, that she has over 2 million followers on Instagram and over 500,000 on TikTok. So it's no wonder that a talent agency like CAA would want to cash in on some of that sweet, sweet influence, especially considering they don't have to deal with a real person with real emotions, just a company who controls every aspect of their creation but one that is also certainly desperate to monetize this in a huge way. According to Variety, CAA said it will work with Michaela in all areas, including TV, film, and brand strategy and commercial endorsements, raising the prospect of a movie or show featuring the character. The article continues, Brud claims Michaela's social status and unique capabilities as a virtual personality and singer, quote, have the power to inspire a new generation of entertainment. And that, quote, Michaela has cultivated a passionate fandom and now finds herself in the unique position of both reflecting and influencing culture. There are unprecedented opportunities for high fidelity virtual characters to push the bounds of what we've seen in any content and advertising to date. We look forward to developing that opportunity with CAA. And it's it's weird, too, because I, I went to her Instagram, and uh, there's a lot of thirsty dudes on there. And yeah. people reply instantly, she's a robot, you idiot. And, and there are videos of her singing and, you know, moving and stuff. I, I, I'm worried about showing it because I feel like a company like Brud would be like, you better stop that. Uh, so, yes, she is not living, breathing, but she moves, she talks, she sings, she does all the things that a normal young influencer would do, except she's a creation in a computer. But you know what? Unlike... Most, most of those Instagram thoughts out there, <laughs> unlike them, Michaela, she'll never have a boyfriend. She's always single. Mm -hmm. So shoot your shot, boys. Yeah. And, uh, and if they tell you she's a fucking robot, you perv, well, fuck them. Yeah. Uh, so is Michaela the future? It seems plausible because as the technology evolves, these completely made up actors, models, and influencers will become indistinguishable from real people with the added bonus that they never age, never gain weight, and will never have an objection to a project unless the company that developed them has an issue. They'll never say the N-word either. <laughs> they're programmed not to. Yeah. Yeah, the perfect influencer. Even if they're sing along to rap music, Michaela knows not to say those parts. Yeah. Did you see that? I, I, I don't know if we talked about it last week, but uh, Rock Band, which is still updating tracks on their service, uh, had to remove a, a Lizzo song because it was inadvertently forcing people to say the N-word because it's part of the lyrics and it was in the actual track. <laughs> like, oh, you failed. You missed this part of the <laughs> yeah, lyrics. You, like, but I didn't want to say it. Say I'm it. white. You got to say it. Come on, say it. Uh, so, uh, I mean, as far as the landscape of virtual influencers, I think that we're safe because no company wants to recreate two near middle-aged white guys who talk shit about things all day. Yet. Yet. But who knows what the future holds? Uh, maybe we can get too old, and or maybe when we get too old, we can just call up Brud and just keep the show going as our younger, far more attractive selves. Hello, Brud. Elliot can have a full head of hair. I yeah. can have an actual mustache. It would be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I can I mean, stop having to work out so much. I can just sit in a bunker somewhere and get facial mapping. Yeah. And just do the show. I think we're on to something here. Yeah. Would you guys be opposed? By then it would look real. Yeah. Because there's still some uncanny valley with Michaela. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it's intentional or not, but uh, there is some. I mean, Blizzard does better cinematics than this. Surely they can make this look better. Yeah. Maybe that's part of the appeal. 
Yeah. Anyways, another dystopian entertainment news. We regret to inform you that real life has officially topped Black Mirror, and there is absolutely no reason to bring it back when the reality that we're living in is somehow worse than anything they could dream of. Mm-hmm. Recently, the Radio Times caught up with the Black Mirror creator, Charlie Brooker, because I don't know what better time than now. Yeah. What do you got to say about this, sir? <laughs> and in their interview, he was quoted as saying, at the moment, I don't know what stomach there would be for stories about societies falling apart, so I'm not working away on one of those. Mm -hmm. Uh, this seems to be a recurring problem with the creative forces behind this type of content. Real life is uh, its just so strange these days that it's hard for fiction to really top it. Yeah, as you'll remember, even the creators of South Park said they could no longer satirize Donald Trump because they simply couldn't keep up with reality. Here's a quote from Trey Parker in 2017 uh, that he spoke with. He spoke with an Australian outlet and said this. It's tricky now because satire has become reality. It's really hard to make fun of. And in the last season of South Park, which just ended a month and a half ago, we were really trying to make fun of what was going on, but we couldn't keep up. And what was actually happening was much funnier than anything we could come up with. So we decided to kind of back off and let them do their comedy and we'll do ours. Yeah, smart. Mm -hmm. But the real reason behind Black Mirror's issues apparently goes beyond current events and trying to outdo them. According to a Variety article from earlier this year, uh, it explained that Charlie Brooker and co-creator Annabelle Jones had left their production banner and that going forward, that would mean Netflix dealing with a rights issue between whatever they start next and their former partners. Yeah. So well, that's, yeah. that's always a tough issue. Uh, quote, if Brooker and Jones sign with Netflix independent of their Endemol Shine back production company, the streamer would need to effectively buy the rights for themselves. However, the price will be high given the IP's heightened value. Mm -hmm. So that seems like the real story, which is being wrapped in a plausible excuse that throws a bit of heat off the creators themselves. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like, I don't know. In, in the most recent, like, batch, it kind of felt like they were running out of ideas. I think, like, Banders yeah. Bandersnatch was, like, truly a unique, like, experience, genre pushing yeah. Yeah, experience, like, work of art. But, and I don't think they can really top that. And, um, I don't yeah, know. a lot of the stuff was kind of like towards the end, uh, meshing all together, where it was just like, I feel like I've seen this better from the same exact show. Yeah. So, <clears throat> I don't know. Maybe, maybe a good long break is needed. Yeah, well, and, like, when it started off, too, like, the seasons were three episodes long. There yeah, was, like, like, a year and a half yeah. between them. And yeah. then Netflix is like, hey, can you do four times as many episodes in the same amount of time? And yeah. they're like, yeah, I guess. <laughs> sure. You pay us. But, yeah, yeah it does, does seem like they might have been facing some creative burnout there. So, sure. whatever, take your time. Now, for, but, but if he's not working on that, I better see a fucking 2020 news wipe. Oh, uh, I think they're, they're doing virus wipe in like two weeks. Oh, God. Thank but, God. But you got to turn on the old VPN. That was the worst part of uh, Charlie Brooker getting a Netflix deal is he's like, guys, I'm too done. busy. I can't do the, the annual news wipe. I think they are. I If I remember correctly, it's called virus wipe. And it's sometime in the middle of May, probably the end of next week or something. So fire up All the right. VPNs, boys. All right. For now, let's move on from the bleakness. First off, we have an update to a story we reported on earlier this week about Tom Cruise and his desire to film a movie in space for some reason. That reason, we assume, is just because he's Tom Cruise and he wants to do something insane because he's done everything else and there's nowhere else to go except for up, way, way up. Mm -hmm. After the initial mostly unconfirmed story made headlines, NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstein confirmed everything on Twitter. He said this, NASA is excited to work with Tom Cruise on a film aboard the space station. We need popular media to inspire a new generation of engineers and scientists to make NASA's ambitious plans a reality. And in addition to that, another NASA spokesperson told CNN that the actor will launch into space and stay aboard the space station while he films this. <laughs> this is fucking nuts. Yeah, they've already filmed stuff. Obviously, they filmed like yeah. streams from there, but they actually filmed like a documentary up there, and Tom Cruise was the voiceover for it. So he's in some ways been working. Uh, it's a cramped NASA. space to be doing anything in. I mean, all the footage we've seen up there has been from, like, cell phones. Yeah. Uh, get someone up there with, like, a Red One camera and, like, a yeah. lighting it, director. The, for the astronauts up there, it's going to be way worse than when living in L.A. You get one of yeah. those placards on your door that says, by the way, your entire street's shut down for the next week because we're filming NCIS. Yeah. Film L.A. Yeah. Like, by the way, there's nothing you can do about it. But, yeah, filming on the space station, insane. Yeah. Crazy. But like we said, reality is now stranger than fiction. So, fuck it. Shoot Tom Cruise into space so he can be that much closer to Xenu. Why not? Yeah. Put him up there on one of those DC-8s with rocket engines attached to yeah. it. Yeah. Send mm -hmm. him up. Mm-hmm. Now, okay, so uh, what do we have for you for um, Quibi news this week? Because, of course, there's Quibi news. Yeah. Is it good news? 
Yes, but also some bad news. So let's start with the good. Quibi finally has something worth watching because uh, Reno 911 has officially launched on the platform, and based on the first three episodes that Ricky watched, yeah. you're getting exactly what you expect. It's Reno 911, but in the year 2020. Too short for my taste. I prefer a full 21-minute episode. Old. Boomer. Yeah. Although it just do it does switch directly to the next episode, so I'm like, all right, I just have to watch an ad exactly where it would be placed on TV. Yeah. But it's, it's fine. It's great. It's a quick bite. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so that's not to say that, you know... <laughs> We wouldn't prefer to watch it in literally any other medium, yeah. like normally. Yeah. But since the app is currently still within its free trial period, it's at least worth checking out if you were a fan of the original series, because it's just as good. Yeah, they've had time. They took they took about a ten year break, and yeah. they like came Black, back Black Mirror needs to do. Yeah, <laughs> breaks are good. Larry mm -hmm. David is the master of the break. Every season of Curb is the last season. Then, like four or five years later, he's like, Ah, I'm yeah. still alive. I'm bored. Do Let's do another one. Yeah. Anyway, while there is finally something worth watching over on Quibi. Uh, they are far out, far from out of the woods. In fact, they're still facing down a lawsuit that has the potential to completely ruin their company if the courts rule in favor of the company that filed it against them. Uh, I think we talked about this before, but back in March, a company called Eco or Echo filed a lawsuit saying that Quibi basically stole their tech, which allowed Quibi to program their videos for viewing in both landscape and portrait modes. And Echo is, quote, currently seeking an injunction that would force Quibi to disable the feature while the suit is being litigated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, this would obviously be very bad for Quibi, whose entire identity currently relies on that feature. Yeah, it was their most marketed feature. You know, the thing that makes Quibi Quibi, basically, outside of the billions of dollars spent on content. Yeah. Well, 1.75. Okay. okay. And although it seems like a stretch that one company could be in sole ownership of this kind of tech, they kind of have a decent argument. I mean... At face value, I am not a lawyer, but according to Echo, the, they contend that they, quote, gave a demonstration of their product to a team at Snap under a non-disclosure agreement. Some of the Snap employees later moved to Quibi and worked on Quibi's patented process for switching between landscape and portrait video modes. So it's like when that, what was the guy who left, uh, like, the Google thing to go to Uber for their self-driving Anthony tech? Lewandowski. Yeah. That's different, though. I don't know. Like, so, so many tech patents are just fucking bullshit. Yeah. Like, just the most general thing. Just We thought of it first, but, yeah. but didn't What, what if you or... could rotate your phone and the video rotated too? It's like, all right, that's your idea forever. Come on. Yeah. I mean... Unless they're, like, using actual code from it, I, I, I think it's bullshit. I wonder if this is... I, I didn't look into the details of it, but I wonder if this is, like, the same tech that Snap used to do that full rotating uh, kind of view to it. Could be. And that's way more interesting. Yeah. And could actually be patented because there, it's something very unique about it. Mm -hmm. Turning your phone and having the orientation of the screen flip has been around, I feel like, yeah. except not switching between the two modes of the same video. Anyways, according to Quibi's lawyer, Quibi would suffer irreparable harm if the injunction were granted. Quote, we would have to rip out a function and figure out how to deliver content to our users in a very turbulent time in the world in which Quibi is trying to get customers to sign up for its business. We've invested in two assets, a horizontal and a vertical asset. If we can't implement turnstile, then half of that asset for every particular show, that asset disappears. So all that for nothing. So yeah, we have no idea how this is going to turn out. Yep. But with Quibi developing the ability to screencast to other viewing platforms, this would seem like less of a problem, aside from the fact that this feature is literally the main focus of their marketing. Yeah. And apparently the kids these days, they just love watching content in portrait mode for some reason. I don't get it, but... Easier on the hand. I guess. Also, not for nothing, Jeff Katzenberg, actually, he contacted that podcast that was issued the cease and desist um, and he apologized to them. No, oh, okay. He essentially asked them for help with the platform going forward during an interview with them that's available online. Yeah, he was like, yeah, I know. Okay, sorry. Uh, but also, can you please help us? Yeah. We need your voice. We need your ideas. Yeah, so we'll link that down below. But hey, Jeff, if you're watching, have your people call our people. We will take your money. What, what do you think about an irreverent, uh, you know, semi-daily news show <laughs> on your platform yeah. where it's pretty much similar to ours, but we don't talk shit about Quibi? Yes. What about that? Uh-huh. Now, over in uh, reunions for COVID charity news, which is also a recurring topic in the news these days, it was announced this week that two great shows from TV history will see a one-time revival very soon, in addition to all the other shows that have done this. Uh, first up, Mr. Show with Bob and David. That's Bob Odenkirk and David Cross for the young people out there. Uh, that show will be returning for a special live stream show on Wednesday, May 13th, and it'll feature guests from the original series like Paul F. Tompkins, Hot Soccer Mom, sorry, Scott Ackerman, and Brian Posehn. Uh, apparently, you need to buy tickets for this, and they cost $10, but 
like we said, all the proceeds go to charity. Hmm. So there you go. So do they have the rights to Mr. Show again? Because when they made the Netflix version, it was just called With Bob and David. Yeah, well, I mean, this title is a, it's a different title. Uh, okay. It, it's, it's very similar. It's just extended. Yeah. So I don't know. And since it's for charity, I would assume that they probably contacted the rights holders and were like, listen. <laughs> Listen, yeah. yeah, you really want to hit the press with the news that you stopped us from doing this and took food out of people's mouths. Anyways, in addition to Mr. Show or whatever the hell they're calling it, Community is also having a reunion. Six seasons at a Zoom call is the quote that's been floating around since it was announced. And most surprising of all, Donald Glover is involved as well. Yeah. Uh, this one will be taking place on Monday, May 18th. It's not an entirely new episode or improv special. They're just going to be doing a live table read of a fan favorite episode alongside a fan Q&A. That, uh, that episode is uh, since they didn't bring back uh, uh, fucking... I'm drawing a blank on his fucking name right now. One of the biggest comedic actors of all Chevy time. Chevy Chase. Chevy Chase. Uh, they did not invite him, and it's the episode where they go to his funeral. <laughs> <laughs> because as everyone knows... Chevy Chase is the worst. He is no a one terrible Chevy person. Chase. No one does. Going back decades. Yeah. yeah. Terrible man. Uh, quote, as part of the event, fans will be asked to contribute to two charities, Jose Andres World Central Kitchen and Frontline Foods, both of which are involved in COVID-19 relief efforts to get fresh, nourishing meals to responders working on the front lines and vulnerable communities across the country. So that's cool. Uh, in uh, random crazy internet news, have you seen what's going on on the world politics subreddit? I mean, it's just... There's no moderation, so it's just turned into like a bunch of like pornography and yeah, so anime titties and shit like that. World politics has been just a shit posting site yeah, for months now. It's not a good site. And uh, it, shit kind of hit the fan when uh, everyone started doing the Google bombing thing where they'd be like, get this picture to the front page so when you Google Donald Trump, it shows Jeffrey Epstein or uh, mm -hmm. and di various variations of that. Uh, after all of that, uh, all control was lost, uh, mods disappeared, and now it is. Literally just shit posting and pornography. Yeah. So every post on there, at least yesterday, was pornography. Uh, every post today was just like, let's see if my washing machine can get 10,000 upvotes. So that's a complete mess. So if you want to see the world uh, devolving into chaos, check out the, the World Politics subreddit right now and just uh, enjoy the ride. So there's that. Cool. <laughs> Anyways, watch this week's Tech News Day and our other previous episodes right over here. Yeah, you can do that just yeah. by clicking that over there. Scott, we got so much content. Yeah, you're, you're going to love it. Pick up the phone. Pick up the phone, Jeff. Uh, we'll see you very soon for a Weekly Weird News. Bye. Bye.